So this tutorial, we're going to look at creating a mailbox, um, just a design I've pulled off the internet. So we're going to start with creating a new um, isometric part. And we're going to create panel A. And um, we'll just start in the um, corner here. So we'll use the line tool, um, hover over the front plane, F3 to lock it. Control H takes me into that sketch view. So this is going to be 325 high. And right mouse click and start again. I'm going to come across here. Um, it says 142. And then just click to place that next point. So just scroll out. Um, this one wants to be um, 10 degree angle. So um, just put in minus 100 on there. Um, not sure sort of how far this comes up, so I'll just draw something in. And then right mouse click to start again. And this one comes across 162. Click to place, up 25. So just tighten it in as we go. And um, then I'm not sure where that goes, so let's just click on here, and this needs to drop down a bit, so I'll just drag it down. Um, just make sure that I've still got that angle in there, so smart dimension. Click on the line, and then A for the arc, or oh, sorry, angle, and as you can see, we've just sort of lost that, so we'll just pull that back out again and then we have a distance between um, the end of there and the end of there and this one wants to be 18 this one here needs to be 25 and again we'll just make sure that we've got those other um, values in there correct so we can add these dimensions in just tidying it up and then on um, the final bit if we come off here um, the angle needs to be 35 and I can hover over that endpoint and get that sort of lining up and just close that off to give me my profile now this is all um, 18 mil thick wood so if I just click on the point here and click on the arrow, I can just type in the thickness that I'm after. And we can save this part out. And I have a folder for that. So we'll just call this um, part A. So the next piece that we want to do is part B, which is this one on an angle. Um, not quite so um, easy to just sort of get that correct. So I'm going to go straight into the assembly. So if I go new assembly of active model, that puts this part into the assembly for me um, as the base part. And from there, I can um, create my new part. So if we go to the Home tab and we can go Create in Place. Uh, just warning me that I haven't saved the assembly. Give that a name. So I've got various options on the Create Place and um, I can go Offset from Assembly Origin by Graphic Input. So if I go Graphic Input, and go OK. I can sort of just pick up off a point here, and that gives me um, the point to work from. So this one is going to be part B, and um, I sort of just need to cheat a little bit here. So um, I'm going to make this simple for myself. So um, under solids, if I go extrude and 
to make this work, you need to make sure that under the Tools tab, you have um, Peer Variables, or sorry, Peer Locate on. And um, I had this on from earlier, so it's already set. So I can click on the face, right mouse click, and I can just drag out. And again, as I said before, this is 18 mil. Um, so if I look at my front view, Control F, um, you can see that we sort of lost a bit of alignment on here, so I can sort of rotate this. And if I move my steering wheel by that central, central knob, um, I can sort of just sort of rotate this down. So this is going to be a, a minus 25 to get that correct. And likewise at the bottom, if I click on that, I can drag that to the edge there. And um, if you remember, that was a 10 degree angle, so I should be able to just go minus 10 to align that. Now, um, if we look at our um, drawing over here, you'll see that um, the um, inset here is um, 15 mil. So, um, I can just pick up on this face here and um, that's just pulling the whole thing out. So let's turn off design intent and um, I'm going to drag this out 15 mil frontwards and then on the back end um, the overall width is 300. So um, what I'll do is I'll just Put that in place and add a dimension so these are pmi dimensions um, which stands for product manufacturing information so i can click on here um, we have the options here of which end we wish to move so um, it's pointing in this end and it's highlighted in blue so if i just go in 300 you'll see that that is the face that moves so we now have our part b um, i can close and return back to the assembly and um, if I hit save at this point um, that's going to just save the parts as well so um, we've got our first couple of parts in here and um, we need to sort of move on um, part C um, I've got a sort of fixed size on here um, so it's easier just to go control N go into a new isometric part and I'm going to, again, just sort of draw on this plane here. If I go front view, it's going to lock it to that plane anyway. So according to the dimensions, 45 high. And I'll not worry about that for the moment. It's going to be 18 mil thick. And I shall just draw that. Approximately coming down this one. This one is that 35, so it'd be 180 minus 35 to give me my actual angle. And that needs to be a just to drop that in, and then I can click or move over that endpoint and click to place that and then I can um, use my trim corner to get those two to join up and give me a closed profile and the closed profile is highlighted by the blue so once I've clicked inside of there I can just enter my size and that completes that so we'll close this out and save this as part C. So um, the next step, um, I'm, when, you, when you create in place, it doesn't create any relationships. So um, I'm just going to go back in and add those in. So I've got a um, flash fit as my default I'm just going to sort of force so I'm going to have a mate between that face and that face 
then I'll have a planar align on the bottom faces so that lines that up and then I will have a third one so I said that was 15 offset between that one and that one okay so we've now got a fully constrained part but that offset has gone in the wrong direction so if I click in here I can just modify that and bring it back to where it was originally now if we go to our parts library and we have um, our folder so in our part C we can drag in now um, if, you, if you're not sure you can sort of um, hold in the middle of the mouse button down get it into the right sort of orientation and then when you drag it in from there um, it's sort of the right way around so we want to do again a mate between these faces and then we'll we'll do a plane or a line here and at the bottom so if you hold over the edges you should be able to right mouse click and get a quick pick if you can't get it straight away so there's um, the three first three parts done uh, reasonably quickly one thing I forgot to do um, you'll see that there's a um, angle on this front edge here um, I can either go back and edit the part or I can um, use the control space bar to go into face selection mode I can pick up on this face here and while I'm in the assembly I've got the ability to just um, create some um, changes on the design so control space bar again puts me back into part selection mode so you see that the little icon on the cursor is gone yellow um, if I switch back to face mode you can see it's um, white so you can see clearly which you're editing on so um, that's sort of moving um, along we're going to need to create the um, top piece next so again this is um, clearly defined so we'll just go straight into here and go control n for a new part file and it's 325 long um, the angle down the side is um, 35 degrees again so I'll just do a simple rectangle by center and it wants to be 18 thick by 325 long and for the angle we just need to um, hit enter to give us our zero again this is going to be um, 300 wide so we can just click inside the region and put in our dimension and to get that angle on the end all I need to do is click on the end face move the steering wheel to the edge and drop that down uh, minus 35 degrees so we can save this um, control s does my save like most Microsoft products so we'll call that part D and we'll close that one down return back to our assembly and in our parts library that extra part will pop in and I can just drag that in so as we've done with the other parts it's just a matter of, of building our relationship between the parts and this way we can go with a plane or a line and likewise on the end so our box is coming together quite nicely um, we need to do a part down the bottom now so for this one we'll do a create in place and I'm just going to leave it as constant with the assembly origin and um, I'll right mouse click to accept it 
and we'll call this one part B. So I'm going to use the um, projector sketch and I'm going to draw on that plane there. So lock that with the F3 key. And I'm going to pick up on these three edges here. And um, I can go Control Q to hide the um, rest of the assembly. And if I use my trim command, I can just go around and pick up on these three here and then use the line command to just close off that shape. Control Q brings back the rest of it so that I can see what I'm doing. And I can click inside the area, drag it up, and like all the other pieces, it's 18 mil thick. So the final bit in here is to select that face there, move my steering wheel down to the bottom edge and I can um, rotate that around and click on the key point to get the correct angle. So um, that was that part finished nice and quickly. So um, I think there's only one other part in here and that's the um, shelf on the inside so that is um, 62 mil down from the underside um, and actually we've got a um, piece that sits on here as well so i am going to do another creating place and by graphic input yeah i'm going to just drop that on there And we'll call this one part F. Deviated a little bit from what they have on the drawing, but um, it's all well and good. So um, if I use my include command again, um, I'm going to draw on this face here, so I'll lock that. Control, Control H takes me through to the sketch view. I'll take that one, I'll take that one, and that one there. Then I will go back into here and I'll do projected offset. Um, actually, no, I'll do a um, offset command and I'll just take that one. Um, set a spacing of 18, and that completes that portion of it. Um, I can use my um, trim command and just get those two. I should have a trim corner to done it that way. And that one and that one. And then these two will bring it in to um, a closed shape. Uh, one last one and trim away that portion in there. So. I can then take this and extrude it out and making sure I've got my key point selected I can snap it in there and then for the shelf let's go back and What I'm going to do is just drag this one back in and I'm going to create a mate relationship between these two. So right mouse click and then I've got these two faces here. And because I didn't create my um, relationships on there, it's going to drop out anyway. So um, you can see what, what has happened. It's just sort of moved out. So um, if I drop out of there, um, I just need to... Um, this is the one I had in originally. Um, 
so if I create some relationships on there, so I want to make that and that part match with this one and then do a planar align to put that in place. So this other part, um, I've got a couple of rela relationships in there already. That one, that one there should have been um, with a gap of 62. Um, and um, what I will do is do a replace part um, with a copy. Right mouse click to accept it. And we'll call this one part G. And for this one, we will um, finish off um, creating our um, relationships. I'm going to do a mate on that face with this face in here. Um, as you can see, we're sort of um, not okay. So if we go control space bar, uh, come out of the mates. Um, control space bar puts me into face selection mode. I can click on that one, click there, and sorry, I've got the wrong face. Click in here to position that like so, and then um, we have um, actually I might need to go into this part, so we go control space to go back to. Um, part selection mode and I want to replace this face here so if I go into my um, surfacing tab I can do a uh, replace face which is eluding me just not sure, so I'm going to and here's my uh, replace face under modify surfaces. So if I pick up on that face, accept that, and replace it with this one, that gives me my um, closed profile. I can drop out of here and now have my um, completed mailbox. One thing I'll um, add on to this is if I go into part A, I am just going to add in um, a number on here. So if we go into um, our sketching tab and text profile, uh, set up which font we would like to use. I'm just going to use uh, this one here. Give it a number, give it a height. And if I lock that plane, change my orientation to center, I can drop that in here somewhere. And then if I go back to my home tab, I can do an extrude 
rather than face I want to choose chain pick up on that rather than add I want to cut right mouse click and I only want to go in one mil so then we have our number on there um, if I go into the view tab I can go into part painter um, choose the color I'm after change it to feature and just choose the cut out and that gives me um, a much tidier finish on my part so one final thing that I um, just want to double check is that um, the length on here um, I'm not 100% sure about. Um, so if I go into the um, inspect menu and I want to just do an interference check um, in here, I can choose whether um, I do a selection from one set to another or all parts in the assembly, which is what I'm going to do here. So I'm just want to check this one here against um, the others. And you'll see that we've got actually some interference in here um, on these two parts. So the um, sizes weren't quite right. So if I go control space bar and switch to face mode and pick up on these faces in here sorry wrong one let's just change that um actually oh, what i may do is hide that so let's uh, hold the control key down i can pick this one as well and turn that back on again now I can just use that to drop it down to touch there. So that gives me the ability to um, just um, resize that. So let's just do that check interference again. And it now tells me that I've cleaned up that um, problem that I had in there. So um, yeah, just some tools in the assembly environment where you can modify multiple parts at a time and um, just check for interferences and stuff. So hopefully you found this tutorial informative.